Good morning, hello and welcome. My name is Bhuvana Purvajha. This is the Indian Express Explain class. We are uh, reconvening after a brief break. Let's get started. So the three topics that I have for you today. Number one, first we'll go to Iceland and we'll uh, see the the news behind say swarm earthquakes. Okay. Now swarm earthquakes are being observed, which means low intensity, shallow earthquakes being observed. Many of them. In fact, uh, thousands of them have been observed in a short span of time. What is it leading to? What does it mean? You know, if you have been going through the news recently, you must have seen that uh, there is expectation of volcanic activity in Iceland. So what's the theory behind that? What's the reason behind that? We'll seek to understand that first, number one. Number two, thereafter, we'll understand, well, today is Janjati Agor of Divas. The Prime Minister is in uh, Jharkhand today. Okay, and therein, he will be launching the PM PVTG mission the Particularly Vulnerable Tribal Groups mission. So on this day, we'll first go ahead and uh, relook and uh, revise, essentially, Bhagwan Birsa Munda's immense contribution in the freedom struggle of India, the rich history of India. Okay, and thereafter, take a look at, say, the PM PVTG mission. And number three, APEC. Okay, Xi Jinping and uh, Joe Biden are meeting after a long, long time. How will how will that change? Will that change anything at all? That's That's for the future. We are not interested in that. However, we'll seek to understand the forum at which they are meeting, which is the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation (APEC). Okay. Author Shivika, Bulbul, Ruchira, Koder, Sheshmani. Good morning, guys. All of you. Thank you for joining. Ruchira, my Diwali was very nice. Thanks for asking. Okay. Let's get started. If you have any particular questions related to what we discuss here today, you, you reach out to me on my uh, Telegram channel that goes by the name of Bhuvan Study IQ. Okay. First topic: Iceland volcanoes. Volcanism in Iceland, what is happening? What's the impact going to be? Okay, so it's under a state of emergency. This is for you to know right now. This is the background of the uh, news that we are looking to cover. But more importantly, from the examination perspective, shallow earthquakes are being registered there. Okay, which means that something is happening very close to the crust, very close to the surface of the land, which is what is telling you that there is shallow earthquakes. Okay. Now, 24,000 earthquakes have been registered just in the last one year. And you have had a particular town that has been evacuated. And what is being suggested is that the volcanic activity may be imminent. Why? Why is it prone to volcanoes? Why is the volcanic activity imminent? Number one, first, let's understand that it's located on the mid-Atlantic ridge. Now, if you have gone ahead and during, uh, say, your geography classes or during the course of your self-study, if you have gone ahead and understood the concept of sea floor spreading, yes, the one that was put forward by Harry Hess, I believe. Is that the individual? Sea floor spreading? Yes. So sea floor spreading, what is it essentially happening? That it is happening at the mid ridges where new oceanic crust is coming up through volcanic activity. Correct? Is this not what is happening in terms of the mid oceanic ridges? You have new material that is coming out, right? Eventually. Somewhere else is it falling behind and you have a sort of convection current that is leading to all of this. Yes, here you have the new crust getting formed at the middle of the ocean and it pushes the older crust towards the sides. So from the mid oceanic uh, Atlantic ridge, yes, on one side you have say Europe, on the other side you have North America, correct. And you have this process that leads to an S shaped figure right in the middle of Atlantic Ocean. Okay, this is essentially the mid-Atlantic oceanic ridge, right? This S-shaped figure that goes right from Iceland in your northern hemisphere, right down to say to, to your Antarctic circle, okay? This entire S-shaped, almost trench-like formation that you found, not trench, a ridge-like formation that you find there, yes? This is your mid-Atlantic or mid-oceanic ridge. And the northern part of that is Iceland. Okay. So to go back to why is Iceland prone to volcanoes? Iceland is located on the mid-Atlantic ridge. Right. It separates the Eurasian and the North American tectonic plates, making it a hotbed of seismic activity. So you have the North American plate that is moving in the western direction. Correct. You have the Eurasian plate that is moving in the eastern direction. And thus, you can imagine that you have a divergent boundary being constructed, correct? Which means that it is a constructive nature. It is a constructive nature boundary. New material is coming up from underneath. 
करेक्ट चारू अरका खंडेलवाल मीत गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग थैंक्स फॉर ज्वाइनिंग गाइज थैंक यू सो मच बट आई यू एबल टू गेट दिस सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस न्यू मटीरियल कमिंग अप पुशिंग टू द साइड विच मीन्स वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू हैव शैलो लेवल अर्थक्वेक्स यू कैंट एक्सपेक्ट डीप अर्थक्वेक्स हेयर वाई बिकॉज ऑन वन साइड यू हैव एन ओशनिक प्लेट ऑन द अदर साइड यू हैव एन ओशनिक प्लेट ओशनिक इंटरेक्शन नॉट अ लॉट ऑफ डेप्थ देर ओके सो ऑन एवरेज दिस इज द नंबर ऑफ अर्थक्वेक्स दैट यू आर गोइंग टू हैव टू एक्सपीरियंस इफ यू आर इन आइसलैंड इन फैक्ट वॉट यू फाइंड इज दैट आइसलैंड हैज डिजाइंड इट्स टूरिज्म अराउंड दिस वेरी फैक्ट येस वेन यू लुक एट द टूरिज्म प्लेज ऑफ आइसलैंड यू फाइंड दैट सर्टन प्लेसेज आर मार्केटेड बिकॉज वेल यू कैन गो एंड सी टेक्टॉनिक एक्टिविटी यू कैन गो एंड सी लावा देर येस यू हैव एक्सेस टू जियो थर्मल स्प्रिंग्स हॉट स्प्रिंग्स ऑल ऑफ दैट इज द प्राइमरी रीजन वाई बिकॉज अगेन आइसलैंड इज एबल टू हार्डनेस ऑल ऑफ दैट इट लाइज ऑन द मिड एटलांटिक ओशनिक रिज ओके नाउ अ स्वाम ऑफ अर्थ क्वेक्स अ सीक्वेंस ऑफ स्मॉल अर्थ क्वेक्स नो आइडेंटिफाइबल मीन शॉक दिस इज एसेंशियली वॉट अ अर्थ क्वेक्स स्वाम मीन्स सो आइडली वॉट डू यू हैव यू हैव से इन इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर सी स्मो ग्राफ इज दिस वॉट यू वो नॉट एक्सपेक्ट सो यू हैव स्मॉल वंस मिडल वंस एंड देन से ह्यूज वंस कम right your p wave s wave l wave in terms of earthquake swarm there will be none be not of this kind this won't be observed you will have low intensity moderate shallow earthquakes that just keep coming some you may not even observe some may be good enough to be observed but in terms of the main shock well that doesn't come what what is that telling us that there is some activity going on very close to the crustal surface very close to the surface of the earth correct so a swarm of earthquake means you do not have any identifiable main shock but what you do know is that this is a precursor to volcanic eruption okay the movement of magma close to the earth surface exerts force now the closer it gets the more likely an eruption and thus the more frequent the earthquake swarms this is what essentially is happening you have new material that wants to come out and this is they say the surface it is now just looking for a zone of weakness to go ahead and get out from it is trying to adjust go sidewards finding space seeking to achieve stability and in that manner it is putting a lot of force on the crust overneath over over it right and this is what is happening because of it looking to achieve stability by looking at a zone of weakness you know and then eventually finding that weakness and then coming out through this is what is causing the earthquake swarm so now how do you go ahead and figure out where the earthquake will happen is there a way you can predict that yes this is where say the volcanic activity is most likely to happen yes you can do that too to a certain extent how do you do that well you this red line that you see my friends yes what essentially is this red line let's understand that now okay this is the line that shows the dike intrusion observed by scientists now when you have been doing your volcanic landforms you must have come across the word dike yes so you must have been seeing seeing this side, sort of diagram where you have magma that comes out and eventually gets out in a 90 degree fashion right dike is also observed most prominently in our western ghats in our western not in our western ghats in our deccan traps okay so this dike intrusion is essentially what that at the surface let's understand it in the simplest manner okay you have new material that wants to come out okay and now eventually it is looking to go ahead and find a zone of weakness somewhere and in that manner it is filling up the empty spaces that might exist and in that manner it might be getting cooled and thus you have a scenario where you can have say a particular rock which will have lightly shaded heavily shaded lightly shaded heavily shaded what does that tell you that the heavily shaded parts of a rock have come because of dike intrusion that suddenly there was some sort of movement of magma that was strong enough to force itself inside the rock and give you these say differently shaded rocks okay solidification is happening cooling is happening and because of that the more dike intrusions that you can spot the more you are able to figure out that yes this is where the zone of weakness as according to the magma might lie correct so this red line that i'm showing you is essentially that line of dike intrusion now one more thing that you need to understand here my friends as long as the dike intrusion is over land 
ओके इफ इट इज ओवर लैंड देन इट्स नॉट अ कॉज ऑफ वरी पर से ओके इट इज ऑब्वियसली अ कॉज ऑफ वरी बिकॉज इस बोल कैन ऑब्वियसली बट इन टर्म्स ऑफ द लार्जर इम्पैक्ट इट विल बी लिमिटेड ओके वाई बिकॉज जस्ट अ फ्यू इयर्स अगो यू हैड आइसलैंड दैट हैड अ ह्यूज वोलकैनिक एक्टिविटी अनदर वोलकैनो हैड इरप्टेड बट दैट टाइम यू फाउंड दैट इफ यू आर फॉलोइंग द न्यूज एंड आई वॉज सर्टनली वट वॉज ऑब्जर्व वर्स दैट दिस पर्टिक्युलर वोलकैनो राइट इट हैड अ ग्लेशियर ओवर हियर and thus you had high intensity hot magma come out and because of its interaction with water you had a lot of say intense volcanic activity that was observed okay lot of dust was created lot of smog was created eventually you had the air space around europe yes that had to be closed for a long amount of time in fact it was the biggest air space closure since world war 2 that was caused by a uh, Uh, a volcano erupting in iceland why because you had water but in this case in 2023 so if the dike intrusion is over land okay no water here so no problems okay or relatively less problems but if it happens over water or if it flows into water from a place nearby on land in that case you can have a scenario where your air space closure might be imminent okay once again why because lot of heat lot of interaction of heat and water lot of vapor being created the more the vapor the more the aerosols yeah everything just comes to a stand still why because your local atmosphere is now getting changed got it so in this years in this case this is the scenario as long as it is over land it's fine but if it extends to an area on the sea or close to sea then you could have a scenario that could be repeated from the last time okay so this is it dikes like i told you the magma will flow into the crack then solidifying either cutting across layers of rock or through a contiguous mass of rock this is it it that the magma is strong enough to force itself into a rock system now can dikes be formed just because of magma no it is not just a category that you associate with igneous also with sedimentary theek hai okay depend on where exactly the magma breaches the surface from a geography standpoint this is what you should be absolutely aware of okay the, the rest of the news is riff raff from the geography aspect perspective understand what's different this time versus say the last time okay if a volcano erupts offshore or erupts on land and then flows into sea then there is a risk of an explosive type ash cloud now you know why okay why because again the interaction of water and magma is dangerous okay this is dangerous this will give you essentially a lot of vapor this will be explosive in nature whereas if it is just the magma and the land then you are looking at lesser vapor and definitely non explosive okay let's go ahead and quickly revise mid atlantic ridge now so a divergent or a constructive plate boundary here is the s shaped figure guys okay this is what you are looking at now one important point that you need to know so i have told you you have the north american plate here the eurasian plate here let me just get a better ink huh? the north american plate here the eurasian plate here the african plate here the south american plate here okay nap sap ep and ap now in the northern atlantic you have a meeting point of the african plate the eurasian plate and the north american plate which is known as the azores triple junction very very important once again okay this happens in the northern atlantic please understand that this is not a demarcation of sorts okay this is just say a common area a common touch point where all the three plates are meeting okay this does not tell me anything else whether it divides this plate into that plate no a common meeting point of three plates okay they share their plate boundaries right this is in the northern atlantic by the way okay in the south atlantic it separates the african or the nubian plate as you might also know it separates the african plate and the south american plate now more importantly from the mapping perspective from the exam perspective so important trenches need to be known by you okay so for example trenches again formed not in a constructive plate boundary by the way like you have ridges that are a property of a divergent plate system okay a plate interaction you have trenches that are a category or a direct by product of convergent systems so what happens how are my trenches formed simply put here it is 
you have plate 1, you have plate 2, okay, depending on the density interaction between them, if you have plate 2 that dives down, okay, this is plate 1 again, this is plate 2, this is diving down, right, so this area, this area that is created is essentially my trench, this steep drop, right, this is essentially my trench, what is my ridge, you have plate 1, you have plate 2, moving away from each other, right? Because of this, you have a trench getting created. What exactly is a trench? Have you not seen the World War movies? Yes, the World War movies essentially were what? There was this one individual who was shooting from this side. So the defendants dug a, a, a hole in the ground, right? Must have seen the border movie where Sunny Deol gives all his motivational pep talks before the soldiers go out and defend. Yes, where were they operating from? A trench. How is that sudden drop, a, a small block of drop getting created? Because of a divergent boundary. Okay. So now in terms of trenches, some important trenches that you need to know by the way. Okay. Let's understand them. Number one, say your Mariana Trench or your Tonga Trench. Okay. These are in the Pacific. Okay. So Mariana is just near where? Near Philippines. Okay. Then in the Indian Ocean. One important trench that you need to be aware of is the Diamantina Trench, okay? And in the Atlantic, one important trench that you need to be aware of is the Romance Trench, okay? You should be aware which trench lies where, okay? Mariana Trench, Tonga Trench, Diamantina Trench, Romance Trench. For those of you who are watching me live, quick question. Tell me where do you find the Carlsberg Ridge? Let's see. How many of you have done your geography seriously? Tell me where do you find the Carlsberg Ridge in the chat box right now. Okay, let's go forward. Now, one important thing that I want you to focus on. So, we have done the geography bit of say volcanism, volcanoes. Let's understand the environment bit also very quickly. What is the climate forcing of a volcano? Climate forcing matlab, the way it affects my climate. How does it affect my climate in the short term? How does it affect my climate in the long term? Okay, so now in the short term, what is being observed is this uh, a particular volcano in Iceland. Okay, it erupted in the year 1783. Now, its eruption was so high, right, that you had global cooling. You had a global cooling of close to 1.95 uh, degree centigrade for two years. So, what does that tell me? that something is coming out from my volcanoes that causes cooling to happen, okay? This is the short term climate forcing of a volcano. The long term climate forcing, we'll seek to understand that too. How does it affect my climate in the long run, okay? So what, what are the primary eruptions that come out of a volcano? Volcanic gas, dust, cloud, pyroclastic material, all of that is obviously there. But most importantly is your sulphur. Okay, you are looking at sulphur, sulphur dioxide that comes out, that is a major irritant, Indian Ocean, correct, good. Rest of you, take active part, this is how you learn, okay, no point uh, not hold, hold, holding back, you know, answer the question. Galat ho bhi gaya to kya farak padta hai, seek jao gaya. Okay, so now you have sulphur dioxide that comes out from my volcanoes. Now this gas is important for us because say the gas, the uh, ash and dust and everything, that will settle itself in a couple of years. Six months, 12 months, it will settle itself. But the sulphur dioxide is important. Why? Because this can cause global cooling. And how does it do that? Let's understand how does it cause global cooling. Okay. Sulphur dioxide gets changed to sulphuric acid. If you have gone ahead and understood and read about, say, your ozone layer and ozone layer depletion, right? And you've understood the reservoir formation that happens. Yes, the reservoir formation. You will know that my nitric acid, yes, and my sulfuric acid are key to this whole equation. So, sulfuric acid, this condenses rapidly in the stratosphere because again, ozone layer primarily in the stratosphere. And this forms sulfate aerosols. You see, the more the sulfur dioxide, the more the sulfate aerosols, the more the aerosols, the more the reflection or radiation from the earth. It's the property of the aerosol to reflect sunlight. It does not allow sunlight to percolate through. 
it's like a reflecting agent a sheet of glass that you put okay so this is it because of increased reflection from the sun back into space your short term climate forcing okay short term climate forcing of a volcano is that it cools the earth's atmosphere okay very important concept which most students i don't think go ahead and revise right they will stop their volcano learning at volcanic landforms the moment you have done your batolith facolith fapolith and all of that sil dike ha wahi pe khatam ho gaya bol ke no no you have to go ahead and understand this how does it affect my climate change how does it go ahead and affect my ozone layer depletion if at all make those correlations okay so go through this slide very very carefully i have tried to do that through this diagram hopefully it should go ahead and clear out the entire concept for you theek hai right let's look at these few questions guys so these are pyqs by the way you know i i i try and find out pyqs for you from the topic that we do so that uh, well you understand what you are supposed to know and what you are supposed to apply question number 1 volcanic eruptions do not occur in which sea baltic sea black sea caribbean sea caspian sea you will let me know your answers in the chat box after the class ends question number 2 from the year 2005 where is the volcanic mountain mount st helens located chile philippines japan us of a let me know your answers in the chat box guys i will expect to see many more answers question number 3 north american plate south american plate nubian plate eurasian plate which of the above is not a part of the azores triple junction theek hai leave this answer for me too and question number 4 diamantina trench indian ocean romanche trench atlantic ocean tonga trench pacific ocean how many of the above are correctly matched okay we'll try and do all sorts of questions some with options without options eventually no before 26th of may your goal should be that you should be able to solve every question without looking at options okay don't be dependent on options anymore theek hai before i go forward very quickly this is closing my friends yes i just had a word with the course coordinator very few seats left make haste if you understand the way we apply concepts here we take our learning not just from say what is written in the books but also substantially include current affairs your answers in the mains should reflect both aspects equally okay it should be good in language now those are skills that you ought to learn okay if you are doing it on your own my best wishes are with you but if you require a bit of guidance go ahead and engage look at the course uh, deliverables look at the faculty profiles i am associated with the english and the bilingual team and the admissions for this are closing soon okay 15th we go ahead and close our bilingual and 17th we close our english batch so 15th is today this is closing today this evening 6 pm hindi has just started the orientation class has just got over choose your language of uh, delivery okay use the code ba live because well you get allotted to my batch in geography csat we go ahead and take a look at these subjects my esteemed faculty members my co colleagues look at the other subjects for you and well the entire goal is to give you conceptual clarity as well as question solving ability without questions or solving ability it's no good it's no good at all okay so well this closes this evening the diwali sale make the best of this opportunity guys you will find the sign up link in the description box below theek hai now let's look at this guys birsa munda bhagwan birsa munda one of the uh, greatest heroes of our history you know uh, so the janjatiya gaurav divas is being observed today right the prime minister is in the state of jharkhand where he will be first visiting the birthplace of uh, birsa munda thereafter he will be engaging in a, 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 a government function there where he will be releasing in fact first time ever the prime ministers a particularly vulnerable tribal groups mission will be announced today okay so let's look at bhagwan birsa munda and then let's look at the pm pvtg mission shall we okay so be uh, bhagwan birsa munda first birsa munda also known as dharti aba now what is dharti aba the father of the father of the earth why was he called so what is the rationale you know very simple here was this person who stood up for the rights of the people the tribal people the people who actually owned on the land who 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 were part of the land you know you cannot have land and people separate from each other and the britishers tried to do this they failed to recognize that the land is intrinsically linked to the social fabric of the country and any chhedchhad there will have some effect from the public side okay 
this was not known to them they were ignorant in their own way in their own sense and because of their policies here was this individual who stood up to do what was correct okay let's look at what he did essentially he mobilized the tribal community against the british and also forced them to introduce laws protecting the land rights of the tribal essentially boiling down to this yes it was to do with land and ownership of land right so to counter effects of the missionaries to convert tribals obviously that was also another major issue with the british government that is often say not spoken about enough or understood enough but then this this uh, conversion uh, focus that was there from the britishers side that was getting patronage from the britishers okay this was also countered by bhagwan birsa munda he had his own faith birsaith now the ulgulan or the great tumult aimed at establishing munda raj by driving out the british government so let's understand ulgulan or munda rebellion three causes okay let's break it down british colonizers with their policies who went ahead and created another sub class of zamindars okay suddenly the zamindars were this same it sort of middlemen between the britishers and the people who were part of the land they started to fleece the people underneath below yes if it was like a food chain if you have to understand the britishers were the apex predators and the people the tribal people were right at the base of it okay so this caused a lot of obviously anger okay mundas practiced the khunt katti system where the whole clan jointly owned the land fit for cultivation this is it they not just affected the land but also the social fabric which is always intrinsically linked in this country you cannot do chhed chhad there okay so the non tribal people started to settle in the land of munda and became jagirdars and zamindars they were known as dikus by the way okay they were known as dikus okay so you had the munda the the local tribal people who called them dikus so the land owned by mundas were seized or forfeited and forced to work as landless laborers you see the people who were part of the land who originally belonged to the land and the land belonged to them suddenly they are outsiders theek hai so these landlords and dikus dikus were the outsiders they strengthened their hold demanded begari wageless labor right this caused a lot of resentment rebellion this had again british support also right they didn't have to do the hard work they just got the money yes they just got the money so eventually what happened the rebellion was essentially a revivalist movement it was a movement for going back to say the tribal pride and heritage that they were eventually the la- the owners of the land they had a first claim over the land they were not begar you know it was almost a movement for self respect as much as it was for say land rights it was for pr- uh, protecting the social order it was also for going ahead and engaging in self determination you know one of the first acts of self determination in pre independent india right so the rebellion was a revivalist movement also a movement for self determination right and eventually you had birsa munda bhagwan birsa munda who led through this entire campaign okay now let's look at the pm pvtg mission that's going to be announced in jharkhand by the way jharkhand also came into effect today only yes when it when when the state was announced back in 2000 i believe yes it came into effect it came to be known as a state on this very date such is the reverence for bhagwan birsa munda and the story of jharkhand and bhagwan birsa munda is intrinsically linked you cannot separate it okay so pm pvtg mission has been asked previously by the way okay 75 pvtgs in 18 states and union territories essentially you have say tribal population okay let's understand it in the simplest manner why complicate something as simple as maths okay so you have a tribal population in the country now as per the census of 2011 right you have around say 10.4 crores okay that are part of the uh, say uh, uh, population okay roughly what around say 8. Point, uh, 6 or 7% 8.6% of the country's population are sts okay now what you find is that the highest population of sts highest you find is in madhya pradesh okay highest concentration of scheduled tribes in madhya pradesh then you have maharashtra then you have odisha and rajasthan maharashtra odisha and rajasthan okay let's understand few basic facts before i tell you about pvtgs theek hai 
Now, in terms of the child sex ratio, okay, let's look at few indicators also. Why not? In terms of child sex ratio, what has been observed is that well, it has been decreasing. Okay, it has been decreasing. You also find that the literacy rate marginally improved. So, you know, in terms of say their government of India outreach for this particular subgroup, one particular vulnerable group is the PVTGs, the particularly vulnerable tribal groups who are more at risk because again, they are, they are people who are say normally say a rural, they have a heritage that is linked to the forests and often the state fails to reach them sufficiently, which is why around 28 lakh people of different tribes in the country currently come under the particularly vulnerable tribal groups, 75 of them. Odisha has the highest concentration of PVTGs. Okay, this is one concept that you should be aware of. The highest ST population is in Madhya Pradesh, but the highest PVTG number is in Odisha. Okay? They are scattered, remote, inaccessible habitations. Right? So now what is what is being looked at? Basic facilities, firstly. Okay. For this entire group of 75 tribal groups in the country, roads, water, Okay, housing, electricity, sanitation, health, nutrition, all of that is first looking to be achieved saturation. The government has said we should achieve saturation, which means there should be 100% reach, 100% reach of the state in so far as these particular parameters to the particular tri tribal group is concerned. At the same time, more specific areas, well, Health-wise, PMJ, sickle cell disease, TB, immunization, Surakshit, Matritva Yojana, Matru Vandana Yojana, Poshan Abhiyan, right? All of that again, 100% saturation has to be ensured, okay? This is the PVTG mission that the Prime Minister will be announcing at 9.30 later this morning in Jharkhand on the birth anniversary of one of the greatest sons of India, Bhagwan Birsa Munda, okay? Let's understand the PVTGs now. 75 centrally recognized PVTGs in the country. Dhebar Commission, very, very important. Related to the formation of PVTGs, okay. Odisha has the highest number and these are the criterion. So, you have say around 10 crore people, no, who are part of the scheduled tribes population in the country, right. So, you have n number of tribes. How do you figure out that a particular tribe is a PVTG or not? Is it that, you know, some particular individual sits and then decides arbitrarily? No, there has to be some scientific logic behind it. And the logic is this, existence of pre-agricultural practices, which means say industrialized agriculture or mechanized agriculture has not reached there. Okay. Hunting and gathering is still being practiced. Zero or negative population growth. Yes. If that is also being observed, another area of concern and low levels of literacy, which is why I showed you the particular, uh, say, uh, according to census 2011, what were being observed, okay. So, if you have the a particular tribe that fulfills these four criterias, okay, one or more of these criterias, well, you are going to be categorized as a PVTG. Go ahead and answer these questions for me, guys. Which of the above is not a part of the Chota Nagpur plateau, okay. By the way, interesting story, why is Chota Nagpur called Chota Nagpur? Huh? Have you ever thought of this? Nagpur is in Maharashtra, Chota Nagpur is somewhere else. What is the reason? So, you had a, 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 a particular kingdom, okay, Nagpur, uh, Nagu Vanshis that were part of the Chota Nagpur plateau, they ruled over that area, okay, and the Chota is that word for Chuita. This is the place where they had their fort, okay, Nagur Vanshis, and this eventually came to be known as Chota Nagpur. It was essentially Chuita Nagpur, okay. So, Koel, Subarnarekha, Barak, Barakar, which of the above is not a part of the Chota Nagpur plateau? One only, two only, three only, four only, let me know. And question number six, Bihar, West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, Odisha. How many of the above are part of the Chota Nagpur plateau? Okay, let's see your mapping. Before you go about solving the entire map of the world, let's look at your India map knowledge first. Okay, let me know your answers in the comment box. Six questions already. Right. Before I go on to the last topic, very quickly, the optional is closing, the batches are closing, the Diwali sale is closing tomorrow, okay, the batches are beginning in the subjects PSIR, Sociology, Geography, Anthro, PABAD, 
history, mathematics, philosophy, and Hindi Sahitya, Hindi literature. Okay. And if these are your subjects, quickly go ahead and sign up for them. Never before have the prices been this low. So it is to your benefit. Okay. And use the code BA Live because then again you get some extra discount, some Diwali gift from my side to you. Right. And and uh, hope to see many of you part of these subjects, part of this course. Make sure, make you use use of this opportunity. You know, eventually the goal is to achieve maximum deliverables in the best time possible with the least amount of kharcha from your side. Correct? Thik hai? Right, to the last topic for the morning, Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation President Xi Jinping and Joe Biden are meeting. Okay, so the EPIC, Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, a regional economic forum that was established well, in 1989. So it's been some time. Okay, it's been some time. But more importantly, focus on this. It's an economic forum. Okay, what does that tell me? That eventually countries are not the focus area here. Economies are the focus area here. Okay, you'll understand this. See, the 21 members of APEC are termed economies, not countries. Why? Because you have entities like Taiwan and Hong Kong that come and attend the APEC meeting as independent members. Now imagine if Taiwan proclaimed to be an independent country, President Xi Jinping would not be very happy. Right? Which is why the APEC categorizes itself as an economic forum which engages in meeting of economies. And what do they look to do? They look to go ahead and integrate Asia and Pacific together. Okay? Economically. Two different worlds, capable worlds, looking to come together for fostering economic interdependence as well as looking at further areas of collaboration. This is a common meeting point for both these sub-regions. Okay? Stated aim to leverage the growing interdependence of the Asia Pacific and foster economic interdependence. This is what you are looking at. That this and this come together, shake hands, work for each other's benefit. Okay. Now is India a member? No. India is not a member. Okay. India in fact applied for membership in the year 1991. But then the APEC as a group, as a regional group, it has a moratorium on new members, which means that right now, all new members are on hold. No new members are to be admitted. Okay. India would have liked to join this group, but India is representing itself. Okay. Minister Piyush Goyal is attending the meeting as, as an observer. India is not a member, but is still attending the meeting. Okay. And so what you find is India expressed interest in joining APEC, made a formal request in 1999, but because of a moratorium, Yes, that was announced by APEC, it has not been able to join. But India compensates itself by going ahead and being a part of the IPEF, the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, which has been uh, the economic, uh, say, uh, what do you call it, the economic initiative of the Quad. Yes. So why is India looking to join the APEC? Well, further collaboration, further area of interest, further uh, convergence that you can assure by being a part of this regional subgrouping. Okay. So this is the Asia-Pacific Economic uh, Cooperation, 21 member states. India is not a part of it. Okay. Chalo. Very, very easy question. Let's look at it. question number seven. India is not a member of the APEC. India is a member of the IPEF. Which of the above is correct? Let me know your answers in the chat box below. Okay. Right. If you have any particular doubts, you will reach out to me on my Instagram ID that goes by the name of Bhuvan Study IQ. I'll be more than happy to help you out with your doubts or your strategy related issues. Let's look at the questions of last class. Okay. Integration of PV cells with solar tubes can help in generating electricity while streaming sunlight is absolutely correct. Okay. Last class we did solar tubes in fact and we understood that one way in which you can go around the problem of having uh, access to solar energy when it is dark is to have a PV cell integrated with it. Okay. Electricity so generated will be needing to convert from DC to AC. Both are correct here. Power per unit area received from the sun in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Okay. This is the biggest hint. Power per unit area is to do with irradiance, whereas energy is to do with insulation. Okay. So B being the answer here. Which Lagrange point do deep space telescopes operate from? We had discussed 
in uh, say brief last class the difference between L1, L2, L3, L4, L5 and we understood that L2 is the point that lies just beyond the earth so as to give you that area of darkness that is created by the shadow of the earth. Take it. Now, which of the following is or are cited by the scientists as evidence of the continued expansion of universe? I think it's a PYQ from the year 2012. Okay. So, let's look at the answers here. Detection of microwaves in space. Absolutely correct. Observation of redshift phenomenon in space. Correct. Movements of asteroid in space has nothing to do with it. And occurrence of supernova explosions has nothing to do with it. Okay. One and two being the answer here. Simple redshift phenomenon, when something goes away from me, then my light that is received on the electromagnetic spectrum shifts towards the left side, towards the right side, okay, towards the side of red light. Whereas blue shift, it shifts towards the blue. On that basis, I can go ahead and understand the wavelength difference and figure out whether the object is moving towards me or going away from me, right. So this is the entire concept that is asked here. Question number five, another PYQ from the year 1999. Okay. So, which climate is this data set related to? Okay. Most importantly, I wanted you to focus on, and I had told you in the last class, focus on this particular zone. Okay. What does this tell you? That your rainfall increases as you go from summer to winter. Right? Your rainfall is increasing too. That your maximum rainfall you are achieving during your winter months, which is an obvious characteristic of the Mediterranean type climate. Okay. Simple answer here. Mediterranean type climates is to do with rainfall in winters. Okay. D being the answer here. Okay. So the students who answered the questions correctly. Neeraja, Kishore, Aman, Shubham, Harshit, Pranshu, Mandeep, Akhil, Gopesh, Tanvi, Satyabrata, Pooja, Koder, Vaishnavi, Vishwas, Gyatso, Aditya, Target CSC, Akshay, Rahul, Ayush, well done. Good, good. I don't think many of you got more than even one incorrect, which is very good to see. Keep up the good work. Answer the questions of today also. To the rest of you who do go ahead and watch the entire class, but never care to answer, again, I'll request you, you know, the first class after Diwali. So go ahead, engage with this uh, questions, you know, leave your answers for me. That way you'll have doubt areas so that you can ask me questions or clear the doubts yourself. The eventual aim is no doubts plus maximum question practice before your prelims. Okay. On that note, we'll wrap it. Not before I ask you to go ahead and leave me a like if you understood the three concepts, if you understood, if you were able to answer the questions. And if you have any particular observations, any particular feedback for me, do care to leave that for me in the comment box. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow morning again at 7 a.m. in the next class of Indian Express Explained. Till then, have a fantastic day ahead. Have a productive day ahead. Bye.